So we've probably underdiagnosed it for much of history. Now we're at a point where certain countries, very high performance countries, the United States and Israel, I would vote and bet that India and China aren't far behind. There's enormous pressures to succeed in school. There's not enough teachers. There's not enough teachers assistants. Large classes, keeping discipline. Maybe ADHD, if you don't assess carefully, is a convenient label or diagnosis to get kids on medication or to get them into special ed classrooms. It takes many hours of work talking with teachers, getting rating scales, talking to parents, getting a long developmental history, doing some tests to say, you know, this, you really have ADHD, but you over there, yeah, you're more active than normal, but with a few class adjustments, you'd be fine. You can't know that in a 10 minute visit to the doctor's office. As with bipolar disorder, as with depression, as with schizophrenia, it takes some real time and effort to get the right assessment and diagnosis before you know now we can start on treatment. People say, oh, ADHD, the kids are just a little fidgety and squirmy, it's no problem. Kids of all ages, adults of all ages with ADHD uh, have an earlier mortality rate. They die younger, not only from potential suicide, but accidental injuries and car accidents and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. ADHD, even if you don't have an associated reading problem like dyslexia, causes you to perform poorly in school because you can't remember the second or third part of the teacher's three-part command. You don't remember what the rules are when you go from algebra class to English class when you're in middle school. People with ADHD, especially if they're not just inattentive, but also pretty impulsive, this combined form of ADHD. Other kids don't like them so well because they seem like regular great kids, but they go to the birthday party and blow out the candles, but it was their friend's birthday, not their own birthday. They just couldn't restrain themselves from seeing the beautiful cake with the lighted candles. Impulsive, erratic behavior pushes other kids away. Academic success, staying free from accidental injury, and having a good superior network are good predictors of later success. And kids with ADHD are vulnerable in all three of those areas. So there's kind of a general rule in mental health. In the first 10 years of life, boys are more vulnerable to neurodevelopmental conditions, autism, Tourette's disorder, aggressive conduct disorder, ADHD. Boys are three to 10 times as likely. Why? The Y chromosome is a very tiny chromosome. The X is a big one. There's not much protection if you've got an XY genotype against any anomalies on the X. Boys are more vulnerable to early family divorce and trauma and stress than girls. First 10 years of life are risky for boys. So it is true that about two and a half or three times more boys will get diagnosed with ADHD accurately than girls. With autism, it's four or five times. Now, if we had more time, we'd talk about the second decade of life from 11 to 20. When the internalizing conditions, anxiety, eating symptoms, depression, and self-harm, girls now march ahead of boys. Emotional disorders, puberty, sexual expectations. Boys have the big vulnerability in the first 10 years. Girls have the bigger vulnerability to a different set of conditions in the second 10 years. It's because of genes. It's because of environments. But remember, boys can get eating disorders too. Girls can get ADHD too. We've been here in Berkeley studying girls with ADHD for many years now. We have a big sample of them. We followed into adulthood. 
and their problems are probably even more severe than boys moving forward. Even though I learned in graduate school a long time ago, girls really don't get ADHD. Well, it's simply not true. Girls like boys with ADHD have academic problems. Their executive functions, their planning and working memory and set shifting, it's a tougher time. Even more than boys, girls with ADHD are disliked by their peers. Girls really put a premium on close relationships and verbal give and take. And if you've got ADHD, you're on the outs with your friends that are girls early on. We have found that girls with ADHD, as they get older, don't have the same risk for drug abuse, substance abuse, that boys with ADHD do. The big finding for our girls is they tend to use nicotine and smoke more, just like boys with ADHD, but are less likely to drink and use illicit substances. That's good, but we have also found that girls with a history of ADHD are tragically likely to get into cutting and self-mutilation, non-suicidal self-injury, and frank suicide attempts far more than their peers in our programs who did not have ADHD. So girls may not be as likely to abuse drugs or become delinquent, but they're terribly much more likely to have problems with willingness to live and doing very destructive things to your body. So we're very concerned about finding ways to help girls with ADHD deal with self-harm.